Hey everybody, it's Kenny Conklin from SciFiAnesty.com and we got the third video for the Klingon Battlecruiser build of the Cadet series and we have our little cameraman Kenny Conklin back there who is adjusting the camera saying that he's got maximum Kenny Conklin going on the video tonight. So I'm hoping you're enjoying the maximum Kenny Conklin because the little man behind there is getting onto it. So we got it all painted up from the last video, I did that in between videos and then I'll let you know what's going on. So let's get you over to the bench and start working. Okay, so in between videos, I painted up the model with the Tamiya darker gray and lighter gray. I, I'll let you know which colors they are again. They are, for the top, was the German gray XF63. And for the chrome on the sides was chrome silver X11. And for the lighter gray, I used light gray XF66. I know these aren't the right colors uh, according to what we saw on the screen and what people say the original one was, but I like these colors, so that's the colors I wanted to make it. And that's just how it's going to go for this build. So the next thing we're going to do on this guy, it's time for clear coating and then going into decals, uh, a wash, and then finally a dull coat and then this guy will be done. So what I usually use for clear coat is either Model Master Acrylic Gloss Clear Acrylic Coat. Now I'll use this one if I'm just using, uh, if I'm just putting on decals and I'm not putting a wash on here or anything like that. But if I'm gonna do a wash, which I am doing on this one, I use the Liquitex Professional Gloss Varnish. Now the difference between these two is the acrylic one is going to come off when I take off the wash with either water or um, a little bit of the Tamiya thinner. It'll come right off and then it'll ruin the paint job at the bottom. This one is permanent, dries hard as a rock and everything like that and you're not gonna, it's gonna seal the paint in. Now a lot of people are like why do you use a clear coat first. Well, there's a few reasons that you're going to use the clear coat. The clear coat, either one of these, this guy or this guy, just like on a car, is going to seal your paint in. The paint job you already did, you want it sealed in, so nothing happens to it. Once it's sealed in, then you can throw a, a dull coat on top. So that's the first reason, and the main reason I use this is to, to seal the paint in, make sure that nothing's going to happen to it. If anything gets scratched or anything, it's going to be this, and I can buff it out and put another clear coat on there. The second reason is for decals. Like, the decals that are for this guy are a little bit thicker, so it helps make it look more painted on, and then you throw another clear coat over it, and then it really makes it look like it's painted on. Another reason I use the gloss coat is for the wash. The wash will go in, seep into the crevices, dry in there, and then I can take it off with a Q-tip and just leave it in the recesses where it belongs. You don't want to use, well, not that you don't want to, I don't like to and I won't use. I have it over here. This is what I use for dull coating. I use the Liquitex Matte Varnish. And now when you use this, the matte varnish is grainy, so when you do your wash, it's going to get caught up in places that it really shouldn't be. When you're doing a wash, the wash is meant to bring out like the little details here and inside the pylon over here and up on the neck and stuff like that. A wash is not meant to be the detail itself. You don't want to use a wash as detail. It's most of the time it doesn't look good, it comes out blotchy and stuff like that. You're using a wash to remember, pop out the details, not make detail out of it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get the Liquitex in the airbrush. I'm going to throw the, the clear coat on it and then i got to let that guy sit for about three hours because i got to do two thin coats of the Liquitex and it takes three hours in between dry time. So I'll do that, I'll hit it again and probably not get back to this video till tomorrow and then we'll go on and show you what we're doing next. Okie dokie, so we're back. This guy has cured for three days with the clear coat on there and today we're going to be off to doing the decals on the ship which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine decals in total. Um, some of these are 
a little thick. So we're going to try to cut as much of that out as we can to keep it more like a painted look. That's not going to happen with the windows because they're just way too close together. And this is my least, least favorite thing to do on a model is decals because for some reason I always mess them up. So let's move that out of the way, move this out of the way and we'll pop one on and we'll do K1. We'll start with one. Alright, I got my water prepared and everything. I want to see if there's anything I can cut off of this guy. Probably not, otherwise I'll really mess up the decal. Get a couple Q-tips out. Alright, as usual, the first thing we're going to do you don't got to see this because you know what you're doing. Pop the decal in the water. And I use the, the micro set and the micro sole. The stuff smells like vinegar. I'm wondering if it is vinegar. Because if it is, I'll just use vinegar to do this next time. I may just buy it and try it. You never know. So I'll wait till, I'll wait till the decal is set up to come off. And then we'll put the micro, the micro set down first and then put the, the decal on and then the microsole goes over it. I don't let the microsole and microset sit on there. I'll wipe up some of it and then let it sit for a while until it's fully dry and then we'll flat coat it once all that's done. So we'll do a couple of these. Hopefully this guy is almost ready. Where does this sucker go? He goes right over there. This, this stuff on here. Yay, vinegar. <laughs> and we got our cameraman today. We got the little man with us. He's got to do his homework. Okay, which way does this sucker go? It goes that way. This guy to the side. And then that'll slide him around. And you can see where sometimes you gotta put more of this on to get underneath it. As you can see the clear. Just want to make sure that guy's in the, in the right spot. He goes. I'm looking, I'm looking. It's at the joint of the wing, a little bit above it. It's showing. Okay. That guy's on there. Try to get the bubbles out of it. And then next up is the micro the microsol. Which is supposed to make it adhere more, especially around curves and rigid objects it's supposed to make it sit in there and I might have to move him a little bit back because it's going off the edge sometimes if you put this stuff on you're not able to move it back because the decal tears okay so I'm gonna let that set for a minute or two and then I'll dry it up I think that looks straight. That looks pretty straight. And then we'll get the rest of the decals on and show you the finished product with the decals and then we'll move on to the next step. Alrighty, we got all the decals on. 
We've got the one on top there. And then we got the side guy on. There's another side guy. And then you got the one on top over here. One underneath. Probably can't see because of my big fat hand. And then the windows on the front, which you probably have a difficult time seeing. The little band that goes around here. That, if you do this kit, is the one that you're going to want to kill. Because it keeps wrinkling up, wrinkling up, wrinkling up. I put a ton of the Microsoft on there. And it still came out a little awkward, a little off, but you really can't tell too much, so it's not much I can do with that now. So she's all uh, done up, and uh, the I was going to do a wash on it, but I think that's one thing that I'm going to keep from the original version. I didn't put, um, I didn't do the right colors or the colors that you should see on screen, like the light blue, the light bluish gray. But I was looking at the pictures, and there's no wash in the nacelles or anything like that. So that I'll keep original. And then uh, the next thing up for this guy is the Liquitex uh, matte varnish. We're going to throw that on there. And once that's on there, that'll be it. We'll let her dry, put her to the side, and we'll start up on the uh, Enterprise next. So I'll be back in a minute. Alrighty. It's all dried. Decals are on. We clear, not clear coated it, flat coated it. And this one is done. I was messing around with the uh, torpedo tube in the front, painting it black and trying to put a wash on it, but it really looked like crap. If I ever do these again, I might drill that out and put a little tube in there just for the depth of it, but otherwise it really doesn't come out looking well, so I just left it the gray. So that's two little guys down from the Cadet series and one more to go, the Enterprise. Okay, well, like I said, both these little guys are done. Our next objective is the Enterprise, so I'll clean these, uh, clean the desk up, get things ready, and put these guys to the side somewhere they'll be safe, and I'm still deciding on what I'm going to do with all three of them when I'm done. I have an idea of a shadow box we may be doing with this, and if we do it, we'll go through the whole process of building it and showing you exactly what we're doing. Thank you for watching another video. I hope you guys come and join us at SciFiAnnecy.com. Use the community. Come drop off your reviews or your articles or anything like that. And we'll get them up on the site. And we'll see you on the next video for the Star Trek Enterprise. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.